What's going on, everybody? This is the Educated Fan, and I'm Brandon, and I'm joined here by your co-host, my best friend, Andrew Moore, and what a week it is. Week one in the NFL season is upon us. It is... I didn't think we were ever going to get here, dude. It seemed like we may never. I thought... Tw- I, 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 I was thinking 2020 was uh not gonna happen football season 2020 wasn't gonna happen you, for a period you had of some time serious doubts i did at the beginning of the season or beginning of the off season if uh-huh. we were gonna even get here but uh hey week one there's a lot of a lot of cult stuff to talk about we have a special guest this week that i can't wait to uh to interview here and it's let's go one and oh colts fans let's go one and oh one and oh every single week one and oh is the goal And let's get right to our interview with the Mr. Jake Arthur. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a former Colts journalist and contributor to the official Colts website, Colts.com, and now writer for Sports Illustrated, all Colts site, Jake Arthur. Thanks for joining us, man. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. So um, we want to kick things off, just kind of let the audience get to know you a little bit, let us get to know you a little bit. Um, So obviously I said... You know, you worked for the Colts, um, recently made a move to Sports Illustrated this year, right? Yep. You want to tell us a little bit about what you did for the Colts um, and what you're doing now for Sports Illustrated? Uh, yeah, so kind of kind of the same, a little bit content-wise. Uh, but I spent the last three summers with the Colts on Colts.com, uh, partnering up with Andrew Walker over there, their uh, main senior writer. Uh, covered – you know, fantasy stuff during the season. And um, especially once we were getting later into seasons, the NFL draft stuff kicked up. Uh, But other than that, just mostly day-to-day cold stuff. Um, And I'm pretty much going to be doing the same thing with Sports Illustrated. Uh, Only been doing that for close to a week now. So I'm only a couple articles in. But um, yeah, just kind of doing a little bit of everything right now. Uh, So I kind of read up, uh, Phil B wrote a little, article about you uh, when you joined Sports Illustrated. Um, obviously, Phil B. has been around the Colts for a long time as well. Um, has he taught you the art of how to sneak in two questions during a setting where he's only supposed to ask one? Has <laughs> yeah, he shared he, that with you yet? He's far from the only guy that, that does that. <laughs> There's a couple of guys in there, but uh, no, every now and then I might do a quick follow-up before anyone else gets to, <laughs> gets to fight that. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, we uh, tease about it every once in a while and I think it was just one week um it seemed like he hit he snuck a few in extra with almost everybody so we were joking around about that um Mm -hmm. so some off-season struggles for Bob Kravitz this year on zoom uh clearly had trouble adjusting (laughs) to the mute and unmute world um he seems to be getting it but how long do you think uh as a society it takes for us to remember uh to come off mute before talking on a zoom call oh god it's that's that's something that just i think it comes with the territory with each person uh like on on the colts uh on basically the press conferences that have now become zoom meetings so i've I've got this enormous head when i put it up Uh like that it it goes to mute put it down and then you also have to remember to hit the unmute button so yeah i think by now i'm i mean most of us have been doing stuff remotely since like march so i would hope most of us have it down by now Okay, we can go ahead and actually talk some football now. I think Andrew's got a question for you next. Hey, don't bother me. Yeah, so, well, I just want to do a quick follow-up off of that. Like, how how different has it been being able to interview the players and the coaches via Zoom meeting rather than, than actually at the Colts facility? Uh, do you get as much access? Or the, have the guys been um, as forthcoming with, with information and, and answering questions as they usually are? Or has it been a challenge? Uh, well, it's, it's definitely different because normally we would be, it's just like open locker room mm-hmm. uh, throughout the week, you know, before and, and after practices, however they have it scheduled that day. Uh, so you can go around and literally just whatever players are in there, um, you can go and, and kind of take them aside, bend their ear a little bit. Hopefully you get to them before or after the mob gets to them. Um, some players have their own designated days though. Like the quarterback always had his own day, Adam Vinatieri, T Y Hilton. They all kind of had their own designated days since so many people wanted to talk to him. Um, but it's, 
it's uh, you had a you were able to get a little more then just because guys are more they're more likely to to talk a bit more in a little bit of a private one on one kind of thing. Uh, but over a Zoom call, it's you know there, there's a bunch of guys trying to talk to you at once. Uh, it is a little more organized now on Zoom because um, if you've got a question for them, you just tell the the PR team that you've got a question. They call on everyone in order. So um, it's different. Each side has its advantages. Uh, if you're if there's an important uh, well, they're all important. But if there's like a really high profile player who you want to talk to it's probably a little easier to talk to him on zoom because in the locker room, you got to fight through three or four layers of, of other media members to try and get to, you know, there's 25 people mobbed around him. Chances are, if you're not in the front or, you know, not one of the people who ask a question every single time, you may not get it, but on zoom, you know, just say, Hey, I got a question for Philip rivers and and you're you're probably going to get called on in order. Awesome. So yeah, let's, let's get to football. So obviously, I mean, there's been a lot of changes with the Colts this year. I mean, DeForest Buckner joining the team, Phillip Rivers, um, plus everything going on with COVID. We haven't really gotten a chance to, to see, I mean, we see the team in action besides the scrimmages at, at Lucas Oil Stadium. Um, what position group are you most excited to see here in week one? Um, kind of which, what has the most questions around them or, or just kind of see where they're at against Jacksonville this week. Uh, that's a good question. I know one that definitely sticks out and being a family fantasy analyst, you know, that, that might be influencing this a little bit, but I, I'd really want to see what they do with the running back group. Um, I think that's one that everyone wants a little bit of definition to. Uh, Jonathan Taylor has definitely been the one that fantasy analysts have ranked higher. Um, but us, us local guys know the Colts aren't just going to throw Marlon Mack in the trash. Right. Like, he's, he's the starter right now. Taylor has to beat him. And it's, it's not a case where it's just going to be easy to do that. Marlon Mack is a pretty unique runner. He's developed as a pass catcher and a pass protector. So Mack's not just going to go away. Um, now he and Taylor might split a majority of the, uh, of the early down carries. And I, a model that a lot of us are kind of looking at is, you know, whoever is the lead back that week might have about 15 carries or touches. The other one has 10 to 12. I think it's just going to depend on the hot hand really. Uh, but I think all of us who play fantasy want to see what's going on in that backfield. Uh, and then, of course, like you mentioned, I want to see that defensive line. Uh, it's a bummer that Kamoko Toure is still out because he was playing at such a high level before he got hurt last year. Uh, but we all, of course, want to see DeForest Buckner working next to Justin Houston. Uh, I want to see al Muhammad develop even further as a pass rusher because he's been working at that, and he's pretty underrated in, in that department. Uh, ben Banigou, his development. And then – what a lot of people might point at as kind of the um, the group with the least depth, I guess, would be their secondary, uh, at, at least cornerback, um, just because they've got some newcomers behind behind the the starters. Even though Xavier Rhodes himself is uh, is a newcomer, but that's interesting. And then some kind of individual guys. I'd I'd really like to. I can't wait to see our Malik Hooker and Tyquan Lewis because uh, they were both facing pretty pivotal training camps and still you know this year is very important for both of them uh but they were they've both been singled out as, as having terrific uh training camps so really looking forward to seeing those guys as well i yeah, noticed I like how you, go, go ahead, ahead Andrew. go okay i like how you mentioned the secondary because i think i think for me that's the one i want to see the most just for week one because i mean week 17 gardner Minshew just completely destroyed the colt secondary mm-hmm. um on top of that i mean jay gruden's no the offensive coordinator down there so it's kind of a different system i mean there is film to look at in his washington days but it, it's all it's almost they're going into it not really knowing what to expect as much um and 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 with the new guys in the secondary like like Xavier Rhodes, Malik Hooker with his fifth year option, not being picked up him motivated to kind of prove people wrong. Um, and then I know Tav- Tavon Wilson, I know was making quite the impression in camp as well, kind of seeing what he wants to do. Um, 
kind of taking that next step with Rocky Sin. I just think there's so many different question marks with the secondary as, and I think the defensive line obviously is going to, to help that with DeForest Buckner and Justin Houston, putting Danico Autry outside at the defensive end position, getting a little mm-hmm. bit more rush that will help, but it's still, it's still going to be kind of interesting to see how they adapt and, and if they can get started on the right foot rather than how the Colts ended the season last year where it seemed like every other week quarterbacks were just putting up points and yards on us consistently. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see for sure. Yeah. That, that last quarter of the season was tough. It's, it's like, as soon as Kenny Moore went down with his ankle injury, everything just kind of fell apart. Um, Malik Hooker was a little banged up at that time as well, but Kenny, Kenny Moore is one of the best, if not the best, slot defender in the NFL. So for sure him coming back and, and being healthy and Malik Hooker being healthy, Kahari, uh, Kari Willis being back there. That's a smart dude right there. It, mm-hmm. I, I think he's going to have a, a pretty decent year. Um, I think the secondary is definitely in better shape than it was when they played in, in week 17. The, the Colts were just, that secondary was just kind of running on fumes at that point. Yeah. And they were on the field a lot. Uh, yes. towards the end of the year, too. That makes playing defense hard. Um, I also noticed, in reference to the running backs, uh, that I, basically every fantasy ranking had Jonathan Taylor ahead of Marlon Mack um, mm-hmm. and found that out. Does nobody even look to see who the starter is? Um, but also, like you said, we all know around here um, that they're going to be splitting um, for the most part of the season. Uh, leading into the game this weekend, Andrew and I discussed uh, – this past week, uh, the conversation about the Jags possibly tanking right now. Um, but I kind of thought a problem with that would be head coach Doug Marone and their general manager. This is their supposed to be their last chance, you know, at a season. If they don't pull something good out of their butts, they're not going to be with the team next year. Uh, what do you? Th- what are your thoughts on Jacksonville? What's going on down there right now? Uh, I don't, I don't want to say they're tanking. I think they obviously are trying to help themselves for the, the near future. Uh, Cause a lot of the moves they've made um, you could consider them culture based, you know, getting sure. some guys who are unhappy out of there. Uh, there's been some moves to free up cap space, you know, Calais Campbell and AJ boy, they were both a, a little expensive. Um, Ronnie Harrison was probably going to get a pretty decent contract if he was going to still be there. Um, and, and a lot of those, you know, the, the trades yielded them, yielded them draft picks as well. Right. And although they lost a little more than they've brought in, they still have brought in some, some pretty decent talent. Uh, their draft class was nice. Uh, CJ Henderson and Caleb on chase on. I love those two picks uh, chase on with Josh Allen this time next year, we're going to say that wasn't even fair. Like that's mm-hmm. two really athletic bendy edge rushers with a lot of explosion. Uh, CJ Henderson replacing AJ Boye. That, that's a big move. Uh, they still, I guess, need a replacement for Jalen Ramsey, but you know, if Henderson pans out, then that takes care of that. Right. Not, not all their moves were, were terrible. Um, a, a lot of, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back with a lot of people was, letting go of Mike Glennon and Leonard Fournette, Mm -hmm. but they've since brought Glennon back because I think they knew they couldn't just have that little amount of experience in the quarterback room. Right. Uh, Cause their backup to, to Minshew was, was a rookie and and Jake Luton. Um, But, you know, for for Fournette and we can't, we also can't forget Yannick and Gakwe and Gakwe has been talking about getting out of there for a while, about a year now, it seems Um, Fournette, you know, re- reports have, have always seemed to have both sides at odds, you know, always trying to improve his his time there, it seemed. Um, so, you know, I, I think there's reason to everything they've done. I don't want to say they're tanking because there, there's just there's just other things they could have done if they wanted to tank and be blatant about it. We've seen sure. that before in the NFL. Um I don't think they're gunning for the Super Bowl this year by any means, but right. I do think they're trying to set themselves up pretty well for like 2021 and, and beyond that. Right. But the problem is, I mean, it's been pretty much reported that if this season doesn't go well, that those two are out. Right. Mm-hmm. You've heard that as well. Uh, I, you know, just reports from, from major media, mm-hmm. you would 
you know, you would kind of have to dig into the local. To... Yeah. But a, a lot of major moves that are made on rosters, ownership is made aware of it. So it's mm-hmm. kind of organi- an organizational decision, you know, sure. um, getting rid of guys like Yannick and Gakwe and Calais Campbell, Leonard Fournette, mm-hmm. um, you keep your ownership in the know on, on that kind of right. stuff. So that, that takes everyone from top to bottom signing off on it. So I would imagine they're all working in unison together. Makes sense. You don't just get rid of a, of a top elite pass rusher in the right. league willy nilly without, without ownership approval. That's, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Yep. Andrew. Yeah. So what, what do you think is going to be the key for the, for this weekend? I mean, obviously, like we said before, no tape. I mean, both teams certainly know each other. The Colts haven't really, I don't think they've won in Jacksonville since 2014. So it's, it's a place that I know they're, they're fired up to win. What do you think is really going to be the key this weekend for, for the Colts to get off to a hot start? And, and, and where do you think Jacksonville is, is really going to try to try to hurt us in a sense? Uh, Jacksonville has, you know, offensively they've, they've done really well with DJ Chark. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, both of his games against the Colts were, were pretty good. They didn't have much of an answer for him. So I would imagine he's going to be pretty involved in that. Um, the the two games they played were just such total opposites. I mean, the, the Colts ran for 260-something yards uh, in week 11 and kind of stomped them and then lost. And then the game totally got away from them in the fourth quarter in week 17. But I would imagine – you know, the, the Colts want to run the ball in general in every game, mm-hmm. but I think they'll especially want to do it in this one because, shoot, it was, they, they ran combined for like, oh, God, it was, what, 264 in week 11 and then 132 or so in, in week 17. So they obviously know they can run the ball on them, and Jacksonville has not gotten better in their front seven as far as run defense goes. Uh, so I, I would imagine that's got to be the plan. And, and they're going to want to see – you know, they, they want to see what Jonathan Taylor and, and Marlon Mack can do together. So mm-hmm. I would imagine the Colts are, are going to pound the ball pretty well, at least 25 to 30 carries, if I had to guess. Um, but, you know, you also have a, a crafty old veteran quarterback in Phillip Rivers that's seen everything. And, you know, I, I don't know how much how, how good that secondary is going to be able to fare against a guy who's in his 17th, 18th year. Um especially, you know, C.J. Henderson against T.Y. Hilton. I, I don't know if that's going to be the matchup or not, but, you know, guys like T.Y. Hilton are going to have those advantages. Jack Doyle and T.Y. Hilton can both find soft spots in the zone. And Phillip Rivers and, and T.Y. Hilton already kind of have this this chemistry where they, they know where to attack those soft spots downfield. So I would imagine, you know, running game first, setting up some chunk plays to play action uh in the passing game if i was the jaguars um that's tough because i you can say try to run the ball all you want but i don't know how well that backfield's going to do they have a rookie undrafted free agent listed as their starting running back in james robinson um personally i thought divino zigbo was going to probably be their lead back this year with Fournette gone uh but he's on the injury list with a hamstring Rykel Armstead is on the COVID list. Um, Chris Thompson, of, of course, that's a Jay Gruden favorite there as a pass catching back, but I don't know how much they're going to be able to run. Um, I, I think their best option is probably try to attack through the air, uh, give a heavy dose of DJ Chark. Uh, Chris Chris Conley knows how to get downfield. He's a big playmaker as well. So we'll see, but I, I think Jacksonville's best bet is to have to, to pass. Cause that's what they're most prepared to do right now. In my opinion, I've always been a big fan of uh, Chris Thompson uh, in the running mm-hmm. back position. Used to be a fantasy killer um, yeah. for a couple of years when he was over with Washington. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I, they don't have a lot of great options uh, against our defense this year. I don't think. I, I, yeah. I do think that the offense is, I think I've been saying this for a few for a few months now that I think the offense is going to look a little bit more like how it did in 2018 when Andrew Luck was here, where it's not where you still we still run the ball quite a bit, but it's not going to be so reliant on running the ball that we become one dimensional. It seemed like 
toward last year after we got off to this hot start teams started figuring out that that really Jacoby didn't want to test it down the field as much and they started loading the box up and while we kept running it and we were still finding success uh it just seemed like we were more more predictable than Frank Reich wants to be or is is known to be um so do you think the do you think we're still going to be more of a 50-50 run pass team or do you do you see the offense kind of resembling more more of how it was in 2018 when when luck was leading the offense I think you're exactly right. Um, I think it's going to be, they're going to be a, they're going to be able to be a little more diverse and probably closer to, to 50, 50, not have to be so one dimensional um, because we've, we've seen in 2018 with the Colts, with Andrew Luck, we've seen what the offense is like when, um, when the quarterback is capable of, of pretty much any, anything in the passing game, you know, uh, they were they were they relied on the run and they did a lot of shorter passes, but they could utilize play action and we were able to get big chunk plays. They used the run to set up the pass, how a lot of teams like to do. And uh, I mean, Philip Rivers doesn't have that arm strength he did when he was 25 or what Andrew Luck had in 2018. Uh, but I think his arm strength, I think his downfield passes are going to be more of a timing thing. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, just let uncork that ball early in the route and let your receiver get under it rather than try to totally meet the receiver 50 yards downfield. I, he's a smart guy. He's seen everything. I, I think he's going to learn how to adapt to that arm strength. You know, if, if you want to keep playing and you know, you're, you don't have a can and you find ways to make it work. Well, and he throughout took training camp. He's, he's tested the ball downfield. So I, I expect that offense. I expect the offensive playbook to pretty much be fully opened at this point. And he touched on that too, exactly what he had said when he was talking about Jacob Eason, and you know everybody's tweeting about him commenting on how he couldn't make a certain throw that he saw him make, and he said, "I just got to throw it earlier. You know, I, I can't mm-hmm. throw it. I can't throw it. Whiz it out there like he does." Well, that's how yeah. Peyton Manning was in a in a sense where I mean Peyton didn't have the the greatest arm, but that anticipation and that timing, he would always put it right in the exact spot that it needs to go. So, I, I mean, you don't have to have a a monster arm to win in the NFL. It's it's been seen over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, so so one thing I kind of wanted to pick your brain about. Um, you're obviously you're a huge fantasy analyst. Um, I, I mean, Oh, I've gone to, to your articles to see kind of some tips before the games. What, who is your, uh, who's your fantasy pick for, for this game in particular, who do you think is going to have that big game that, or someone that, that if you have them on your team, you definitely should put in your fantasy lineup this week. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually, I've been working on my, my fantasy preview for this Sunday's game. Uh, most of the today, the guys I've mostly highlighted, uh, I, f- I think you got to go ahead and, and take your risks with Marlon Mack and, and Jonathan Taylor because I expect them to try to run the ball. They killed Jacksonville on the ground twice last year. I, like I said earlier, that front seven, as far as we know, hasn't gotten better against the run over the offseason. So I, I would like to lean on Mack and, and Taylor, either or. I, I you know, as we kind of discussed, we don't really know who to lean on quite yet, but Mac is the starter. Um, I looked at the defense for sure. Um, this on paper, this defense should be the best one they've had in quite some time. Uh, the defense is built on three pillars. That's the three technique defensive tackle, the nickel and the will linebacker. And the Colts have three of the best in the league at each of those positions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and their defense is pretty healthy right now. So I've, I've got to give the Colts defense the, uh, the edge there. And then I was also looking at, I think it was T.Y. Hilton was, was the other guy. I, I especially wanted to mention just because Rivers and T.Y. already seem to have a lot of chemistry. T.Y. is facing a pretty young uh, secondary. He might be drawing the, uh, the assignment of C.J. Henderson who, you know, that's a rookie. When we saw Tennessee try and put a rookie and a Dory Jackson on him, you know, that, that didn't go quite well. Um, so I, I, I definitely lean towards Phillip Rivers and T.Y. Hilton in that matchup. Uh, but the I, I had a sleeper out there that I wanted to use as well, and that's Mo Alley-Cox. Um, Love that. You know, he, he's, he's probably owned on 
very few rosters. I, I would imagine it's less than 10, less than five or 10%. Uh, but if you're in deeper leagues, this might not be a bad time to to take a swing at that. He's the co-starting tight end right now with Trey Burton now. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, uh, when he was pretty healthy, he was fourth in the NFL among tight ends at the average depth at which he was targeted. And that was over 11 yards downfield every time he was targeted. And then last year, he was fourth among tight ends in yards after the catch. Uh, he averaged seven and a half yards after catch. Um, last year so he he just gives me a, a real ladarius green vibe when i consider philip rivers being his quarterback uh, big athletic guy who can stretch the field that's not what jack doyle is he's more of a chain mover he finds the soft mm-hmm. spots um, i think we could see that philip rivers really likes mo alley cox while trey burton is out especially um, in the red zone absolutely he, he's going to be the biggest guy out there um in, in the red zone so I, you know, his, his current average draft, his ADP right now is like tight end 56 or something. And he's for this week, particularly he's like in the thirties or forties. So he does not have to do much at all to outperform those rankings. So if you're in a deep league and you know, you're looking to mix it up and, and want to start, you know, sh- shake things up and, and start, kind of a, a crazy sleeper. I I'd go for Mo Alley Cox. Those are great picks. Thank you. Although I I had <laughs> I had TY I've got I got TY uh on my list to start this week to, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um got any predictions for the game this week? What do you think's gonna happen? I'm I'm leaning pretty heavily towards the Colts. Uh nothing against Jacksonville. I just think they're overmatched. Um the Colts have a much more complete roster. There's when when you look at the first and second spots on their depth chart at pretty much all positions, it's not really hurting much anywhere. Uh, they could use maybe a little more offensive line depth, uh, maybe a little more experience at corner behind the starters, but the, the Colts just have the much better roster. Uh, this defense is really looking forward to get after it, and I'd give them the, the edge over Gardner Minshew. Um, God, I, I, I guess the, the strength of Jacksonville right now is Gardner Minshew throwing to, to DJ Chark, and I think the Colts know that, and they'll be prepared for it. So I, I lean pretty heavily towards the Colts in this one. I'm with you. Uh, are you a betting man? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. I Well, I would tell everybody to put it all, everything you got on the Colts this week. Um, <laughs> Colts by 100 if they want to. Hey, I I think if if you're in a uh, if you're in a survivor league, the Colts are pretty safe pick this week. Absolutely, Andrew. What yeah. about you? Yeah, I'm going Colts too. Um, I think I just think the specifically between the two organizations, there's not going to be that huge learning curve with Philip Rivers changing organizations. I think he's going to be able to hit the ground running. Um, I really do think that that Marlon Mack, especially how he's looked in camp, he's looked as good as he's ever been Jonathan Taylor, that one, one punch is just absolutely going to be something that Jacksonville really can't handle. I mean, like Jake said, they really haven't done anything to improve their, their front seven very much. And, and that's just going to allow them to eat. I know Quentin Nelson is ready to get out there and, and put his body on, on defenders. Um, And while there are some question marks in the secondary, um, I think, with Kenny Moore back, that that really does make all the difference. And and when you have DeForest Buckner coming right up the middle, right in Minshew's face, um, Darius it frees Darius Leonard to go out and just make any play that he wants. Um, I do think the Colts finally get a win in Jacksonville after all these years, and uh, we start out with start out one and zero, baby. Yeah, on on opening week too, because that's yeah. been a minute. Also, <laughs> 2013, I think, is what I heard on one of the uh, yeah. mm-hmm. chats. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, we appreciate you coming on. You got anything you want to plug? Uh, anything you're working on special? Instagram, Twitter, any of that? Well, just uh, follow Phil B and I along on allcolts.com. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty geared up for week one. That's where we're putting all our content out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Facebook at Jake Arthur NFL. Awesome, man. Hey, well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, looking forward to following more of your stuff and uh, getting some insight on uh, some fantasy info. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me, guys. Absolutely. Appreciate Go Colts. It, Jake.
absolutely awesome. Uh, thanks again to Jake Arthur for joining us this week. Uh, but we got more Colts stuff for you going forward today. Uh, Colts news from practice this week. Uh, Colts claimed Andrew. You go. You you just looked up how to say this guy's <laughs> name. I'm gonna let you tackle that. Yeah, tight end Noah Togiai off of waivers from the Eagles. So um, he was a guy that that the Eagles wanted to bring back on their practice squad. They released him, and, and I even heard some rumblings they wanted to bring back on the active roster but with the trey burton injury ballard was able to snag him when he was on waivers and uh he's a guy that's on the active roster right now so with burton down and burton on ir who was placed on ir this week um trey burton has will at least miss the first three games so togi i could see some action fairly quickly especially since the the eagles offense is pretty similar to the colts offense i mean frank Reich came from there obviously so um we'll see he's a pretty athletic tight end he was undrafted out of oregon state um real real fast long guy so we'll we'll see what happens and yeah i had heard the same thing that the eagles i mean he was surprised that to hear that the colts claimed him uh because the eagles had told him they planned on bringing him back um Mm -hmm. i think i read that somewhere today um a couple injury updates uh, Anthony Costanzo, the oblique, returned to practice Wednesday, was limited. Uh, I expect him to be a go for this weekend. Yeah, it, R- Frank Reich said it was minor, and it looks like he wasn't he wasn't kidding around. So Costanzo was back. He was limited, but I mean, as long as he's full go on Friday, I wouldn't I wouldn't be concerned. Uh, Matthew Adams ankle returned to practice Wednesday, limited. Yep, same thing with with Matthew Adams. I mean, he was back looking good. Now, there were some additions to the injury report today. Um, well, Julian Blackman wasn't because Julian Blackman's been limited. He's They're still right. slowly bringing him back. Um, Ryan Kelly with a knee issue, he was limited. And Desmond Patman with a knee, with a knee was limited. Again, those really don't seem too, too serious. The Colts are pretty healthy right now besides Trey Burton don't you um, being on say IR. things like that and gosh right. do you ever learn <laughs> With, besides look Trey what happened Burton, Desmond Patton now is uh limited in practice after Frank Reich talked about how durable and consistent he is and he just is available <laughs> other guys have been in and out and he's been there but hey injuries happen they'll be all right yeah. um but like I was saying, but Trey Burton was put on IR this week, so he'll miss at least the first three weeks of the year. And then Sheldon Day was also placed on IR. Um, so those are really the only two guys that are that have major injuries for the Colts. So um, hopefully, hopefully, let's continue this trend. All right, and finally, it is game week, and we got predictions. Not only our Jags pre- preview, but we're going to predict every game. I think we might keep track of uh, how successful each of us are and then compare at the end of the year. It's going to be a real shame to bury you. Well, uh, we'll show who the real educated fan is over here. Yeah, well, I put my money where my mouth is almost every week. So, uh, <laughs> Texans at Chiefs, we've talked about this a lot. The Chiefs are just going to mollywop the Texans. Yeah, I've got the Chiefs too. It's, it's banner night. I mean, Patrick Mahomes can come out there firing both both quarterbacks on fat new deals. But, yeah, the Chiefs Chiefs take it. Houston's uh, 0-1-1. Did we talk about Deshaun Watson's big big deal getting signed? Um, Deshaun Watson made a lot of money. There's He's making more money than uh, Patrick Mahomes is through the first four years, but less money than Ryan Tannehill. Right. That's <laughs> absurd. When you put it that way. Um, so you got – you, I'm going to start writing these down. You got Chiefs? Yeah, I'll take the Chiefs. All right. Who do you got in the next game on the slate? Jets versus Bills. Bills. I think it is the year for Buffalo to win the AFC East, so I think they're going to start out 1-0. The Jets are, aren't are a very good football team. Um, so, yeah, Bills at home. I also have the Bills. Now, I will say I think some of the bets I've placed already um, – may or may not match up with my predictions. I might have picked back and forth on a couple of undecided ones. So don't listen to Bad Beats with Brandon. No, Bad Beats with Brandon. The, all the stuff I say on Bad Beats with Brandon today I agree with these predictions here. All right. Um, so Bill's next. The next one, I've got Vikings beating the Packers. 
See, I've got Packers beating the Vikings. That's Here one of those go. close ones. Here's what I wouldn't do. Not, nah, I, I think that one's a lock, actually. Really? Yep. Wow. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be pissed off and uh, saying, hey, I'm still here. Let's let me go out and, and torch these guys. So I think Packers win in Minnesota. At the end of the day, uh, you can't will a team that has no, I don't want to say nobody, but not enough around you. I mean, if there's just not enough help, you can't, I mean, you're not going to be able to will yourself to beat every good team you play this year. Um, so you got Packers. I got Vikings, uh, Philadelphia, Washington. I assume we agree here, Philadelphia. This is, this is where I think, I think Washington could win. I'm going to go with Philadelphia, but I would not be surprised if Washington comes out and wins their first game since the whole news about Ron Rivera. They're, they're going to be excited. Alex Smith is back on the roster. Um, who knows with the injuries to the offensive line to the Eagles, Chase Young might go out and dominate in his first NFL game, but I I mean, I'm going to take the Eagles. Same. Uh, that is the only problem is Chase Young, I think could wreck things already. Um, Cleveland versus Baltimore, I assume. Baltimore? Yeah, I'm going to go with Baltimore. I don't think there's any way around this one. No, I think okay. I think the Ravens are they're just so stacked. And, and while there's a, still a lot of hype around the Browns, I mean, it's the Ravens are just the better team. I think this next one is an absolute hair splitter. Uh, but what pushed me over the edge is that Mitch Trubisky was named the starter. Um this week so i think he's going to come in with a little swagger a little confidence he's been looking good in camp bears are going to beat the lions i agree i think mitch like you said he has been looking pretty good in camp so um and i think the bears are a better team than the lions all around if if they have just even serviceable quarterback play um so while matt stafford is back and matt stafford i've heard has been a dark horse mvp candidate um i think bears take this one in detroit Mm-hmm. Um, what do you got for Seahawks Falcons? Seahawks Falcons. Now, this one could go either way. I mean, with the Seahawks traveling all the way across the country to to Atlanta, I mean, that usually doesn't bode well for them. But I I'm gonna follow my MVP prediction, my prediction that Seattle is the number one seed. So I'm gonna take the Seahawks here. I agree with you, but I'm going to tell you, the line is real close. I think the Falcons are only plus like 107, and I was pretty surprised by that. That made me a little weary. Um, but I just, even with the traveling and, you know, the, the Falcons having a home field advantage, at the end of the day, it's not going to be a fan advantage. They're going to, you know, dis, they're not going to disrupt the offense of the Seahawks very easily. So next one, go ahead, Andrew, for Dolphins, Pats. Dolphins, Pats, I am taking the Pats. I think in Foxborough, um, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not going to be able to will the Dolphins to a win. Um, I think Cam Newton will have a pretty decent game. So here we go. I'm not going to trash on Cam Newton this week. Um, but I think the Patriots do get it, get the win, and um, go 1-0 as well. How about you? Well, Ryan Fitzpatrick had a parent pass away this past week. Right. Was that his mom or his dad? I don't remember. Uh, his mom. Okay. Do you remember uh, the game after Brett Favre's dad passed away? Oh, good point. Okay. The good Dolphins point. are coming off a win at the end of the season last year against the Patriots. They're feeling real good. I think, uh, here you go, my buddy Tyler, if you're listening, I think uh, they have gotten better this off season. Um, and I think Ryan Fitzpatrick has a lights out game and the Patriots, although everybody's saying how good Cam looks right now, at the end of the day, he's not been there as long as, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick's been with the Dolphins. I think it's going to be, you know, a week or two until he's starting to look good on the field in a game setting. So that's my big upset for the week. One of them. Hey, I won't be mad if that happens. That's for sure. That's one of them. Chargers, Bengals. Uh, I think the Bengals might edge one out. See, I think. Smooth Joe Burrow. Cool Joe Burrow. I think it's going to be the Chargers. I, especially because that, that Bengals offensive line is still pretty atrocious. Um, and you're going to have Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa just going nuts, wanting to get after it. So I, I do think the Chargers will win. 
Um, I, I don't, I think Joe Burrow wins offensive rookie of the year, but I do think the Bengals still struggle. I don't think it's going to, they're going to win very many games. So I think the chargers take this one. You know what? The Bosa brothers could have been our, on our list of potential defensive players of the year as well. Yeah. Um, very well could be. I do have the Bengals edge in that one. Now this next one, um, I think is my favorite upset of the week. The Cardinals are going to beat the 49ers. Oh, notice I said they're going to, I didn't say, I think. The Cardinals are going to come out and win week one against a team who just went through a tragic Super Bowl loss. Okay. We've seen teams look at the Falcons. I mean, the year after they got beaten embarrassingly, just they looked terrible the next year. Um, it's hard to come back from a loss like that. Yeah, true. Um, I mean, we all expect Kyler Murray to have a breakout year. DeAndre Hopkins just became the highest second highest paid wide receiver in the league just an absolute monster deal as well for him um so it very well could happen i do think i think i'm gonna go with the 49ers just because the offensive line for the cardinals is still pretty bad Mm -hmm. and the defensive line for the 49ers is fantastic so i'm gonna go 49ers bucks saints what before we do bucks saints you skipped raiders at panthers let's do that one first did i you did. I must. I didn't write it down. Rip. Let me write it down real quick. Raiders. See, this well, is why I need to go by, uh, by my outline. Oh, shit. You know why? Because I was skipping some lines, and I got real <laughs> confused in here. I was starting to run out of room on my pen and paper like a loser. All right. Okay. Raiders, Raiders at Panthers. I, I'm going to go Raiders on this one. Um, I don't think that the Panthers are going to be very good. Um, and I think that the Raiders with Derek Carr, um, they've got Henry Ruggs on their team too. I think he that's going to help mm-hmm. Derek Carr as well. Um, Marcus yeah, Mariota was placed on IR. So yeah. Carr doesn't have anybody breathing down his neck so he can relax a little bit. I heard he wasn't breathing down his neck anyways. He's looked pretty terrible in camp. But I think Raiders beat Carolina. I am going to go with Las Vegas as well uh is that game at home for vegas no it's at it's at north carolina Carolina. oh that was just a big mess up on that was a big screw up on the nfl scheduling team um we're in las vegas now get us i want to see that stadium week one right away um so where are we at buck saints yes i think this is going to be a crazy crazy tight game um and i'm going to go with the saints more out of desire than anything (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't bet on go, this one. I'm going to go bucks. I think the, even though new Orleans is such a tough environment, drew Brees and Michael Thomas are so tough to be in that dome. Brady just has so many weapons. And, and with, I think Bruce Arians is just foaming at the mouth to get it going. So I'm going to take the bucks. I think, I think the bucks beat the saints. Yeah, that's, I, it's going to be a good game. I wouldn't bet on it. I, I probably did, but not, <laughs> probably in a parlay, but I, w- I wouldn't put a lot on it. Um, Cowboys, Rams, I struggled with this one. Um, I really, really struggled, but I think the addition of C.D. Lamb um, is going to cause, you know, they, the Rams have Jalen Ramsey, but they they don't have enough to cover C.D. Lamb and um, Amari Cooper, uh, and I think Dak Prescott is going to kind of play lights out. Yeah, I think the Cowboys beat the Rams um, as well. I, they're going to spoil the L.A. opener in that new stadium. But, but I mean, Dak is motiva- more motivated than ever to just cash in on a contract. Um, it seems like Zeke is healthy. Uh, Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup. They've got just such a, a stud offense. And then Jalen Smith, uh, Leighton Van Der Esch on defense it's it's going to be tough for the rams to to beat the cowboys sunday night steelers giants you got to go steelers here steelers. i think big ben's back um pairing up with juju uh very I just excited think, to watch him play yeah i don't think the giants are, are to that level yet i think saquon has a good game but i don't i think the steelers win the game in the end and titans broncos you got titans i man i want to take the broncos but I'm going to go Titans. I just think the Titans are, are a step above the Broncos. And with 
the signing of Jadavion Clowney with the Von Miller injury that we'll talk about here in a second. It's, I just think the Titans, are the, I think it'll be a close game, but I think the Titans do win. Well, this is another one we split, and I think the Colts are the outright leaders in the AFC South week hey, one, baby. Um, I hope you're right, brother. One, I really two, do. One, two, three, four, five, six games we disagreed on. I'm gonna That's have you. Good, I'm gonna have you six in the whole week one. I'm gonna pick every, every one of these is right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead and go over a little bit of NFL news here. Um, what do we got? We got Jalen Ramsey signs a five-year, $105 million extension with the Rams, making him the highest paid DB in league history. That's an average of $21 million a year for a cornerback. That is absolutely absurd, dude. And, and I mean, Jalen Ramsey got exactly what he wanted. He wanted out of Jacksonville. He wanted to go to a big market city and he wanted a huge contract extension. Jalen Ramsey got all three of those. So, I mean, good, good for him. We'll, we'll see if he ends up getting a, a ring in LA eventually, but uh, yeah, good for, good for him chasing that bag. I agree. Uh, Von Miller, unfortunately, great football player that I love to watch. Um, dislocated, basically attended an ankle this week, possibly out for the season, but with this year's IR rules, could possibly return in December. Could return in December. Usually this injury, if you get back quick, it could be as quick as three months. More realistically, right. it's a five to six month injury, so that would mm-hmm. put him out into March. So we'll just have to see. I think it'll probably depend on how the Broncos' record possibly mm-hmm. if they're fighting for a playoff spot he might try to come back as quickly as he can if not then why why rush it so uh but yeah it's a, it's a damn shame that it, i guess it was a freak play in practice so it wasn't even contact it just just happened so sucks. it sucks because von miller is definitely one of the greatest pass rushers of all time yeah um that's really it for the nfl um but oh you're kidding me dude i really really suck <laughs> at putting the shit on the soundboard I need. Hey, and also, don't be the guy that takes a shit in the porta potty I'm the guy that takes a shit in the porta potty <laughs> this week because I had music for Bad Beats with Brandon this week, and I don't have it in here, so eh, tough shit. You'll hear it next week. Um, so we'll just get right into it. Um, I've got some underdogs I really like this week, uh, and I mentioned them as we went through. Cardinals, Dolphins, Bengals. Uh, feel free to slap a little money on them this week. Uh, games I just would not touch. Uh, Tennessee and Denver, which I mentioned. Bucks and Saints, yep. don't touch them. Now, are these for the for the money before? Was that for like the outright winner, or are you yeah, talking about I don't, the spread? I don't typically. If I if I'm talking spread, I'm gonna t- mention the spread. All right. Um, I'm gonna say with points minus the six, whatever it is. I, for the most part, I don't bet on spreads because I'm a big pansy. Um, I really am. I, the odds, I, I'd rather do a parlay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know what? I'll just jump into my crazy parlay of the week. Now, FanDuel and DraftKings are both limiting me on my, uh, craziness because you're a degenerate because I'm, I'm a degenerate and they're scared. I'm going to land every game one week. <laughs> uh, but I think this one's 15. Uh, I got bears over lions, Ravens. Packers, see, there's one, <laughs> there's one that I said <laughs> differently. Um, Colts, and part of that's because of the 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 odds. You know, sometimes hey. I'm only throwing five bucks, two bucks, what did different I, stuff what like did that. I say on. about betting on the Colts. What have I said about betting on it's the Colts? It's a five. It's a. I don't even think it's a five dollar bet this week. It's a dollar sixty seven. Why don't you just calm down? Uh, Las Vegas Bad juju. and Panthers. I have the Panthers in here. Uh, Bills, Eagles, Seahawks, uh, Bengals. And see Niners on this one. I know, and I know I have the cards in another one. Uh, Saints, Rams, Steelers, Broncos, Kansas City Chiefs. Dollar uh, sixty-seven at plus two hundred and forty-seven thousand eight hundred fifty-nine odds to pay out four thousand one hundred forty bucks. Wow! So Good luck to you, uh, I could come back to the next episode. You know, loaded with a new MacBook. Um, <laughs> And some <laughs> new toys, um, or just a dollar sixty-seven broker um, locks this week: Colts, Seahawks, Ravens, Vikings. You parlay that, you're at plus thirty three eighty-eight. So not bad odds there. Um, and if you haven't gotten in yet, you still have time 
to go to FanDuel, or I'm sorry, DraftKings, and bet uh, that that basically the Chiefs plus 201 or 101. So 101. It, the only way you lose that one is if they lose by 102, and uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Go ahead and throw $50 on that. Make a free $45. Um, and a real fun FanDuel Super Boost that's out there right now. Uh, total points scored in Week One before between all NFL teams uh, over 741 at odds of plus 150. Fifty dollar bet pays out 125. I hammered that all fifty dollars that they'd let me. There you go. And that's it for Bad Beats with Brandon and this episode. We are so excited to watch some football tomorrow night. Um, you know. Plain and simple. I fucking love football, and I love you guys. You know what I mean? Uh, so <laughs> Damn um, straight. go ahead and follow us. Thanks again, Jake Arthur, uh, for coming on with us. Um, follow us on our socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the goods, uh, at The Educated Fan. That's at T-H-E-E-H-D-U-C-A-T-E-D-F-A-N. Shut up. I don't want to hear about it. You guys have a wonderful week. We got a special outro this week as well, courtesy of uh, NBC Sports to get you fired up for some football. So football's back, baby. Football's back. Enjoy. Peace. While every year we can't wait for the return of football, this year it may mean a little more. It's a new season with new hope. It's time for kickoff.